Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to compare the difference between an inclined ice dye and an inclined liquid dye. As usual, I pre-washed both of the shirts. I've soaked them in a soda ash solution for 20 to 30 minutes. I wrung them out of my panda spin dryer so they're just barely damp. I've also turned them both inside out. For time's sake, I'm only going to show me folding one of the shirts, but I've done the other shirt the same way. I'm going to begin by centering the shirt. This process is going to go really fast, but down below in the description for this video is a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. Essentially what I'm doing is getting both sides of the front of the shirt next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt next to each other. The purpose for centering a shirt is so that after I apply the dye to the shirt, both sides of the front of the shirt will end up looking more symmetrical since they're next to each other, and both sides of the back of the shirt will look more symmetrical since they're right up next to each other. Okay, so now our shirt is centered, and I'm using a heart stencil that I've made out of a piece of plastic cutting board to draw the heart onto the shirt. I'm going to place the stencil where I'd like the heart to be and use a washable marker to trace around it. For a design that I do quite often like a heart, I like to use a stencil that keeps a little bit more consistency in my designs. Now I'm going to fan fold or accordion fold this line. I personally like to start at the top of the heart. I think it's easier to make that curve in the heart right at the beginning. Once I have the line folded, I'm going to tie it with some sinew. I'm going to wrap the sinew around the line a couple of times and slowly pull it tight. I don't want to shift my fan folds. Then I'm going to wrap it a couple more times and pull it tightly again. To add an extra design element, I'm going to make one more small sinew line just on the outside of this one. For the rest of the shirt, I'm going to straighten up the fan folds and I'm going to tie and hold all of those folds in place with some kite string. I used sinew around the heart portion because I'd like to have a defined line around the heart. I'm going to tie the rest of the shirt with kite string because I don't want any definite lines in that part. I'd like for the dye to be able to move down the shirt. I had a request to show how I tie things off with the kite string, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration. I take the end of the kite string and I hold it underneath my finger as I begin wrapping the kite string around the shirt. I don't do a knot or tie it off in any way right in the beginning. I start wrapping all of the kite string around the shirt and continue wrapping all the way down to the bottom of the shirt and I'm pulling the kite string a little bit as I go just to tighten it down on the shirt. It's not real heavy, so if I pull too tightly, it's gonna break the kite string. I wrap all the way down to the bottom of the shirt, and then I begin wrapping all the way back up to where I initially started. Then when I get back up to the top where I initially began, I cut the kite string off and find the end that I just left hanging loose. I tie those two ends together in just a simple knot. Mm -hmm. 
Then I just cut off the excess string. Okay, so I mentioned that I'm going to compare an incline ice die to an incline liquid die. To do that, I'm gonna place each of the shirts inside of a piece of vinyl guttering. I've laid the guttering out flat on the table, and I'm gonna use the same color palette on both of the shirts. I'm gonna begin by applying the dye to the ice dyed shirt. I'm gonna add liquid dye to the heart portion of the ice dyed shirt, and I'm adding hydrangea from Dharma Trading Company. I'm using some paper towels to wipe up any of the excess dye. Right outside of the heart, I'm going to apply lavender from Dharma Trading Company. After I apply the dye, I'm going to use the back of my stainless steel spoon to kind of push the dye down into the shirt a little bit. Then about halfway down the shirt, I'm going to add another line of the lavender. The next color I'm using is Purple 521 from Custom Colors. I'm making a second line of the purple down the shirt as well. The third color is Dharma's Hydrangea. If you're wondering about the spoons that I'm using, I purchased them from Amazon. They're a stainless steel lab spoon, and so some of them have spoons on both ends, and some of them have spatulas on one end and a spoon on the other. I have a link down below for where I purchased them if you're interested. I also have links down below for several of the other items that I use when I tie-dye. The final color I'm adding to the shirt is Custom Colors Grape. I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash to the top of the shirt just to make sure that when the ice melts and runs through the shirt, that there's still plenty of soda ash remaining in the shirt to react with the dye. Now I'm gonna add the ice on top. To incline the shirt, I have a plastic tub or tote, and I'm going to place one end of the vinyl guttering down into the bottom of the container. I'm going to leave the other end hanging over the edge. That's going to incline the shirt. I'm going to add just a little bit more ice. Okay, so now let's start working on the liquid dyed shirt. I'm going to place it in the same container with the ice dyed shirt. And I'm going to put it at the same incline as the ice dyed shirt. I'm going to begin by adding Dharma's hydrangea to the heart.
The next color I'm going to apply is Lavender from Dharma. I'm not concerned if part of this color goes down to another part of the shirt. That's part of the effect of an inclined dye. Just like on the eye dyed, I'm going to go about halfway down the shirt and start another line of all the colors. I'm putting the color on pretty thick. I want most of this color to go throughout the shirt because I'm going to add a different color to the back of the shirt. I checked the back of the shirt just to make sure I was applying enough dye that it was starting to barely come through to the back. The next color is Purple 521 from Custom Colors. It looks like I'm overlapping the colors, and I am some. Part of the lavender had started to move down the shirt but hadn't fully saturated that area, so I'm going to start applying Purple 521 to that area just to make sure the whole entire shirt gets saturated. I'm adding a little bit of lavender on top of where these two colors mix in an attempt to not have a really harsh line right there. I'm adding Hydrangea from Dharma. And Grape from Custom Colors. I checked the back of the shirt and most of the colors are coming through pretty well, but I want to do a little bit more touch up. On the back of both of the shirts, I'm going to add Imperial Purple from Dharma Trading Company. I have to wait until the ice melts on the ice dyed one, but on the liquid dyed one, I'm going to go ahead and turn the shirt over and apply Imperial Purple to the entire back side of the shirt. I don't want to apply too heavy of a coat of the Imperial Purple, but I do want to cover the entire back side. I'm not going to add this color though to the heart area of the shirt. For the processing part, I'm going to turn the shirt back over and put the lighter colors on top. I put the shirts aside and allowed the ice to melt. Remember, the ice dyed shirt is the one on top and the liquid dyed shirt is the one on the bottom. As you can see, there's quite a bit of undissolved dye still sitting on top of the ice dyed shirt. So I'm going to add another coat of ice. But before I add the ice, I'm going to turn the shirt over and apply the Imperial Purple liquid to the back side of the shirt. And just like before on the liquid dyed shirt, I don't want to over apply the Imperial Purple on the back side, but I do want to cover the entire back side of the shirt. Now I'm going to turn the shirt back over and add another layer of ice. I allowed the second layer of ice to melt, and after the ice melted, I let the shirts process for another 24 hours. I started rinsing the liquid dyed shirt, and I started rinsing it in cold water to rinse out any of the soda ash that was in the shirt. Then I gradually warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the excess dye. I did the same exact process with the ice dyed shirt. Since there was quite a bit of dye coming out of both of the shirts, I went ahead and ran a sink full of hot water, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the sink, and soaked both of the shirts. Soaking the shirts in hot water will help get out some of the excess dye so that you don't have to continue to just rinse the shirts. When the hot water cooled off, I came back and changed out the water and soaked them a couple more times until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirts into the washing machine and I washed them using a hot cycle and a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. 
Then after the shirts were washed and dried, this is what they look like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I put the liquid dyed shirt on the left side and the ice dyed shirt on the right. So let's talk about them and let's kind of compare. Let's talk about the liquid dyed shirt first. Here we have both the front and the back side of the liquid dyed shirt side by side. Right off the bat, the very first thing to notice is that the liquid dye colors didn't split. And they did move down the shirt a little bit, but not a whole lot. You can tell too from the back of the shirt that the imperial purple that we put on the back side of the shirt is a lot darker on the back than it is the front. You can see the imperial purple lines coming through on the front, but they're not as intense as they are on the back of the shirt. That's part of the reason for going ahead and centering a shirt. If we hadn't centered this shirt, one half of the shirt would be darker than the other half. So with the back side being a little bit darker than the front side, nobody's probably going to notice that when you're wearing the shirt because they can really only see one side of you at a time. I like the way the colors flow into one another though. There really aren't any harsh lines between colors. Okay, so let's talk about the ice dyed shirt. Here again, I've put the front side and the back side right next to each other. Of course, the first thing that stands out is all of the cool color splits that came out of the dyes that we used. I think that because the colors are not uniform, it gives a greater sense that the dye has moved further down the shirt. I think that the dye did move more down the shirt on the ice dyed shirt than it did the liquid dyed shirt, but I think that the color splits maybe give an illusion that it moved more than it truly did. I think it's a really cool effect. I also can't tell as much of a difference where I added the imperial purple on both the back side and the front side as I could on the liquid dyed shirt. I can see some of the imperial purple coming through on the shirt, but it's not as drastic of a difference on the ice dyed shirt as it was the liquid. So now when you look at the shirt side by side again, you can see how the colors are more uniform with no color splits on the liquid dye and all the other variety of colors that have come out of the ice dye shirt. You can also see what I was talking about with the imperial purple. You can distinguish the color a little bit more in the liquid dyed shirt where it's not quite as distinguishable or noticeable in the ice dyed shirt. I also had some issues with this ice dyed shirt. The design is in the middle of the shirt, but the neck of the shirt is not. So I was very aggravated when I untied the shirt and washed it and found that the shirt was twisted. So I redid the ice dyed shirt and this is what the new ice dyed shirt looks like. I wanted to go ahead though and do comparisons with the original ice dyed shirt because it was kept under the same conditions as the liquid dyed. So between these two techniques, which is your favorite? Do you like the more solid color of a liquid dye? Or do you like the color splits and more variety from an ice dye? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.